good morning, good evening, good afternoon to you, good day to you, wherever you are, whoever you are. Welcome back to the Oliver Perry Show. Of course, I am, as always, your host, Oliver Perry. God forbid my name change anytime soon. It'll be really confusing. But until that time, listen, I've got another guest on today, and she is dope. I've gotten nothing but great things from, to hear about from her. I've talked to some friends who knew her and they put me on to her. So I want to make sure I introduced her to you guys. She's a multifamily investor. She's also a teacher of the multifamily and real estate game in general. So we're going to get into it. We're going to talk to Miss Camilla Jeffs right now. Let's hit it. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I give you Miss Camilla Jeffs. Camilla, how are you today? <laughs> I am fantastic, Oliver. Wonderful, Thank wonderful, you. Wonderful. Wonderful. Listen, I I'm so excited because I got to t get to talk to you today, and I got to use my round of applause once again, which I love my round of applause. <laughs> um. Anyway, so Camilla, let's let's talk about you. All right, you. I wanted you to give them a little bit about about your background, your story, and then we're gonna hop into our questions, and we're just gonna have a conversation, and then we'll we'll make it happen. Yeah, you bet. So I started out investing in real estate at the age of 22 and I house hacked. And it wasn't because I was fancy or thought I would be a cool real estate investor. It was because I didn't have any money and I needed a way <laughs> to live and still be able to, uh, you know, live in a house because I was tired of living in, you know, my husband and I were living in this garage apartment um, and it was terrible. And we just really wanted to be able to have our own home. But the only way that we could afford to have our own home was to house hack it and rent out the basement to other people, which is what we did. And it was amazing because we lived there and we only had to pay like $100 a month. And wow. the house had a pool, which was super cool. And so we were excited about that. And, and as I started thinking about real estate and, and thinking about you know, what, what else could we do in real estate? Cause it was really awesome to have someone else pay the mortgage. Right. Um, and that's when I got the fire, I started reading all the books and, uh, you know, attended a couple of, uh, you know, educational events mm -hmm. and, uh, we just started investing. And so we did a lot of single family homes. We did small multis, launched a property management company. Wow. And then a couple fast forward, you know, many years later, we decided it was time to go into large multifamily. So I always wanted to buy an apartment complex. I thought that would be super cool to have that in my portfolio. And as soon as I bought one, I'd be set for life, right? right, right. <laughs> uh, that's not how it works. <laughs> and, but as I was thinking about, well, how do you even buy an apartment complex? Because up until then, we had used all our own money, all our own skills, all our own time. We'd literally done everything ourselves. Um, but as I looked at apartment complexes, I was like, uh oh, these cost millions of dollars. Right. And I took a peek at my bank account and sure enough, there's not a million dollars in that bank account. <laughs> so I'm thinking, well, how in the world do you even buy an apartment complex? So as I was educating and trying to learn this, I realized something super cool. And that's that you don't really buy an apartment complex on your own. You actually participate in a group of people who buy it together and then we share in the profits. And I thought, well, are you serious? You can't, you can do that. So the first thing I did was liquidate some of my, you know, small single families right. and I invested passively into a group investment. And do you know what, Oliver, it was so crazy. I got, better returns than most of my single family homes were giving me. <laughs> and I didn't have to do any of the work, like nothing, right. nothing. I didn't have to talk to any tenants. I didn't have to fix the toilets. I didn't have to mow the lawn. And those were all things that I did before. And it was incredible. And I was so excited about it that I, right. I was like, you know what? I need to teach other people, other people who are literally hammering walls themselves. <laughs> There's a better way <laughs> that you can invest in real estate without all of that headache and work and time. I love it. That bank account check will definitely always humble you on it. Every <laughs> time you think it's going to be all good and sweet, that's the thing that's going to hit you in your neck. Um, that's an awesome story. That that sounds like you got real clarity and you kind of ha figured out your way, like your path along the way, which I think is something we all should be able to do. Now, what inspired? Because you've got a brand called the Steady Stream Investments, right? And steady, mm -hmm. it it is what it sounds like. It's investments that give you a steady stream. 
don't you know don't make this complicated people but uh, what <laughs> what <laughs> what inspired you to create this particular LLC as opposed to going in just making you know a property management company or what have you yeah. So the inspiration behind it was just the excitement I had about passive investing. Mm. And I knew that other people needed this avenue. They needed to be able to add large multifamily into their portfolio mm. when they didn't and they probably didn't know about it because I didn't know about it for 15 years. I didn't know it was even an, a, an option for me. Uh, so had I known about it earlier, I definitely would have invested earlier and I, and I would have been further along in my journey, but that's okay. I believe, you know, things come and go for a reason. There's time and season for everything. Uh, but steady stream investments, you're right. It's exactly what it means. Like I founded this company to help provide other people with some steady streams of income. And, uh, and that's what I'm looking for. I want to help them add additional passive income streams to their own financial portfolio nice so what's been what inspired you to take the role of the teacher though because that's not you know ha wanting to help people is one thing being able and having the patience to teach people is a whole nother because i assume after the fifth time you get the phone call and they're like hey what does emd mean and you've already <laughs> you've already told them five or six times you're kind of like oh my god so what inspired you to take the role of the teacher as opposed to just you know, getting somebody else to come in and doing all that stuff. How'd you become the teacher? You know, I've always been a teacher at heart. I, I love educating people, uh, especially on things that I'm passionate about and excited right. about. And so being the teacher is actually really fun for me. It's fun for me to, uh, because as teachers, you get addicted to the light bulb moments, the moments when, a you know, a student has that realization that aha, that oh my gosh, are you serious moment? I love those moments and I live for those moments. And uh, it's just so exciting to, to see that happen in students. But the other cool thing about my business is that I'm able to do education in multiple ways. Like yeah. I have a YouTube channel. I can send out you know, written communication via a newsletter. I can write blog posts so that anybody on the internet can find it and can find this information. I think I'm just really passionate about making sure the information gets out there. Right. You know, and I'll post little mini videos on TikTok and <laughs> my kids think that's funny that I'm on TikTok <laughs> and Instagram, right? right. And, and just, just constant education is really fun fun for me and and I enjoy talking to you know first time passive investors those mm -hmm. that's my specialty is helping the first timer get into one of these investments all right let's let's and that that makes me happy because one of my favorite things to talk about as everybody knows on this podcast is talking about branding and marketing and things we do in real estate that are affected by that what what made how much decision making did you put into creating a YouTube or deciding to do a YouTube and then what's that what's that process like where you got to sit down and make content? Because I like make content, but I'm almost certain, just like everybody else, there's times you're like, oh, my God, man, I got to do this again. How you know how how did you end up on that path of doing YouTube and the content and all that great stuff? Yeah, well, so I have to I have to point out that you know I'm I'm also known online as the introverted investor, and so being an introvert, it it was a big thing for me to get over making videos and like being on camera. It was really difficult to uh, to do that and to like really put myself out there, but I just figured that there are other introverts out there who have really big ambitions and goals like I do. And I really wanted to help them. I wanted to make sure that they knew that they could achieve big things. That it's not just extroverts out there who are rocking the world. Introverts can rock it just as well. Um, and so <laughs> with the YouTube video, yes, it, it can be, um, it can be a chore sometimes, mm -hmm. uh, but I think one of the one of the keys is for me is just mapping it out and just having a like a whole map of exactly what we're going to be educating on. So I, I put together a six month plan. So I do it six months at a time. And then I just know, okay, this week I'm teaching about the equity multiple. And then we put up a video on equity multiple. And okay, this week I'm teaching about the three biggest risks in passive investing. And then I just, you'll create the video and, and put it up. And it's important to me to be consistent and to show up for my uh, students because I, I 
because I love it. And I want to make sure that they have all the education they need to make really solid decisions. Nice. Now, how much time do you put into the scheduling of these YouTube videos? You talked about a plan. How much time are you really sitting down and, and going through, hey, I'm going to do this. I'm going to say this. How much is that? Or do you because even though you're introverted, you do have a I get an extroverted energy from you just as much as you're introverted. What's your process like for each video? How, how does that work? Yeah, so each video, um, so the six months is just mapping out the topics. So I, I'll do that. It, and that will that doesn't take very long to map out the topics, maybe an hour or two to map out the topics. And then each week, I need to kind of write my script or write the bullet points about what I'm going to be talking about. Okay. Um, so that takes a little bit. And then also putting together kind of a, I like to put together uh, slides or sometimes we just edit it and put like um, other things on there. Mm -hmm. um, so I did hire an editor. So I have an editor helping me. So really my job is to sit down and film it. So I would say each week probably takes me three or four hours a week to create a YouTube video. Sheesh. I thought, man, I, listen, I can tell you right now, I don't have an editor. It takes me about six hours to, get, to finally get a YouTube video <laughs> done and out. You need an editor. You're telling me I am I am on the hunt right now. Listen, if you're listening or you're watching, are you? if you're an editor, please feel free to shoot me an email, info at the Oliver Perry Show. I'll reach out to you immediately. Um, <laughs> I was I was gonna ask you. All right, all right, Camille. Let's do let's do a YouTube video right now. But you got a long you got a heavy process behind you, so I'm not gonna do that to you. I am 100% the off the top kind of person, and half the times it comes out may not make sense. And my editor has a lot of work ahead of him or her. Um, <laughs> anyway, with that, with that said, all right. So you've done all this stuff with the YouTube. Is YouTube your primary? You consider like one of the other channels kind of your primary source. Where do where do people interact with you the most? The primary source right now is uh, Instagram okay. and then Facebook as well. So I do have a Facebook group that people can interact called Passive Investing Made Easy um, that people can come in and interact there. And so I will do, I'll also hold uh, webinars that I will do for the people who are in my community. Um, and they're a little bit more, they're a little longer. They'll, they're 20 minute webinars with a 10 minutes uh, Q&A afterwards. So they can have live access to me and um, a I can answer any questions that they may have. Okay. So you're super community oriented. I like that. That's good stuff, Camilla. That's fantastic. <laughs> All right, so let's. I'm going to ask you this: What's the most impactful conversation you've had with somebody who's been in the community so far, who who you've kind of taught and given some tutelage to? Yeah, so I had this great conversation with a with a woman who who came to me and she set up a call with me and we were talking and she said, you know, Camilla, I have been working my butt off for 20 years and now I'm in my 40s. My children are, you know, mid-age and and starting to be teenagers and I'm just tired, right? I'm just right. tired of it. And it's, it's been a big long slog and I've worked my way up the corporate ladder. And the problem I'm experiencing is the higher I go on the corporate ladder, the more time they want from me. It's, mm. it's not easy at the top. It's harder at the top. And you know, the closer you get to the sun, the more likely I'm, you're going to get burned. So she was feeling pretty uncomfortable that she was so high up in the company that it would be easy for someone to get rid of her. But then also they were putting so many demands on her. She was traveling all the time. And, and so we had a good conversation about what, what, could passive investing do for her? Right. And I mapped it all out and we talked about, you know, the money that she had sitting in her 401k. How could we, if we moved that over into a multifamily passive investment and she joined one of these group investments, mm -hmm. what she could actually live off of the cash flow that she was getting. And she had, and it was a really cool realization moment for her. And when she said, now, wait a minute, you mean if I just put this in here, I'm going to be getting cash flow that I can actually, that can actually replace my, my corporate income. Wow. And, and then I'm still building equity and I'm getting tax advantages. And I was like, yeah, that's the power of investing into real estate rather than keeping all your money in the stock market. And she's like, okay, I'm ready. Let's do it. And she was so excited because she could see kind of a, 
uh, relief in the future from, right. from all of the stress that she's been harboring for years and years and years. Round of applause for her. That's awesome. <laughs> that is fantastic. Yes, Camilla, I'm going to use it again at some point today, too. I'm going to use it again. Uh <laughs> I love it. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. It's awesome that you had that kind of effect. And I'm sure what's the feeling that you get when that kind of thing happens? How, how do you, how do you feel? What, like, what does that do for you that day? Oh, I just feel so grateful. So grateful that she found me, that, that we were able to have the conversation mm -hmm. and so grateful that, um, that I can share something huge and life changing with a bull, uh, you know, cause before when I did all my real estate before I, I was quiet about it. I didn't tell anybody about right. it. It was right. nobody, none of my friends wanted to learn what I was doing. They were just like, uh, I don't know what you're doing. You're weird. And, right. <laughs> and now it, it's just, uh, it's just so gratifying and, and just makes me feel so grateful that I have something that I can share with people that will literally change their lives. Man, that's, that's, uh, to be able to have an impact on people. And I've said this several times. I don't even know if I've said this on the show, but I've said this before, uh, to be able to impact people like that is, I feel like bar none, it's like the best feeling you can have because you're literally affecting somebody else's life and their family just as much as you are yours. So later on down that line, when she teaches her, her nephew, her grandson, her son, or whoever it is, how to do it. Next thing you know, the ball just rolls down the hill. And now their the entire family yep. is financially free by the age of two, right? That's nuts. So that's, <laughs> you know, that's, uh, <laughs> that's awesome. I mean, you're, you're two years old. You ain't got many bills coming in. So you're good. Uh, that's so, right. That's but, right. But, it's easy to be right? financially free then. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. But He's having that ability, right? Not too many expenses, you know, a few workouts every morning. You got the pacifier, that kind of thing eat now and then go use the bathroom and then repeat it's not a whole lot oh and a nap <laughs> throw a nap in there and you're good to go it's not a lot, not a lot happening uh, <laughs> <laughs> right uh that's awesome so camilla with all the stuff that you've got going on and all the investments and all this stuff i know and it's always interesting to me to be able to talk to people who are married in real estate because when you you're doing that it's a different i feel as though it's a different um what was the word a different way of having to handle business if we will if you will like your your husband has is involved i'm certain how do you guys maintain that balance between husband wife family and business because you know when you get mad about something that he didn't do he was supposed to do for the business let's say you know it's hard not to bring that home how does how does that work for you guys how do you guys handle that dynamic yeah, I think the thing that works best for us is that we have very clearly defined roles. Mm. Um, I do certain things in the business and he does other things in the business. And so keeping those roles separate and not step, it helps us not step on each other's toes. Right. Uh, so I think that's important. Um, and, and then, you know, there's certain things that are, that I'm really good at. And so I just made sure that those are the things that I do. And then there's certain things that he's really good at. And so those are the things that he does. And, um, and then as far as, you know, working together, I mean, family, I mean, everything's communication is so important. And, you know, every morning we're sitting down, we're like, okay, here's what's going on today. Here's what I've got. What have you got? Who's, which kids going where, who's driving them and who's right. not driving them and who, you know, right. And so, so it's just, um, constant negotiation sessions happening in, in our lives. That's good. No, that makes sense. That's um, I've heard that. I've heard that before. And that that absolutely makes sense. It's, a, it's really interesting to hear you say that. After a while, it's something that you just kind of have to accept once, you know, one or two people have said it like, hey, it's it's a matter of having those clearly defined roles. Then it starts to be a definition as opposed to, you know, a, some guidance. So that's really cool to hear. Now, with your 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 background and what you've been doing, how did you decide? How did you learn? better way to say it how did you learn what exactly you were great at as opposed to what you weren't was it all trial and error was it did you sit down and read a book was it the disc assessment or you know did god just kind of slap you with the bible and it just pop popped in your head how did, how did that work <laughs> Yeah, well, so I'm I'm kind of a trial and error type person. Okay. I you know, like I said before, I was you know, DIY, do everything yourself. And and from that I learned
learned what I like to do, what I don't like to do, what I'm right. good at, what I'm not good at. Although I don't, um, I believe in growth mindset to hundred percent. And so I don't ever like to define, well, I'm not good at this or I can't do that or can't do this. But I, I don't allow my children to say that. And so I don't allow myself to say I can't. I, I, um, I just have, I just say, well, I'm learning how to do this, right? right? So I totally believe in in being able to learn anything that you want to do. You, but at the same time, if you know what your strengths are and you take take the time to really think about yourself and think about what you are great at. So for example, I'm great at educating others, you know, and I really enjoy that. And I think that you the combination of what you're good at plus what you enjoy that's your strength and that's where you need to focus and continue to hone that and continue to grow and grow and grow that. I don't believe in focusing on your weaknesses. I don't mm -hmm. think uh, focusing on my weaknesses is helpful. I'll, I, I'll just hire someone to do that, like editing YouTube videos, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I don't like it. I'm not good at it. Right. And so I need someone else in my life to do that for me. And, and so that's what I, that's how I navigate it. Ooh, that's solid advice. So it's a, you said it's a combination of what you enjoy and what you're good at, right? Yep. Okay, mm -hmm. cool. I want to make sure I got that in my notes so I don't mess that up later on. Um, okay, so <laughs> so Camilla, with, with all the stuff that you did, said, like you said about your, you know, figuring out how you did right and did wrong, what has been your biggest lesson for that taught you the most if, throughout your career what was the biggest lesson i'd like to hear the biggest thing you know the thing that sucked the most that you laugh about now but you were sure enough crying about when it happened i want to hear the story i want to know what happened and i want to know what lesson you got from it let's hear it okay so it's a story of a house that was a flip that we were working on and and remember doing everything ourselves but uh we thought it would be a great idea to buy this house because it was cheap and the home only cost us thirty thousand uh, dollars but i did not do any homework on the area and i did not do any homework on what rents i could achieve or you know i i kind of did a little bit of homework on what we could sell it for after right. and you know the air we looked like we could sell it for around 60 after i'm like oh my gosh i can buy it for 30 and sell for 60 slam dunk home run this is going to be the best deal ever right <laughs> well oh boy. Oh boy. it turned into the biggest money pit ever okay. and <laughs> Um, so it started off when we started renovating. And at this time, I also keep in mind that I had three children, two of which were twin babies. They were oh, six man. months old. And so we would bring the, the three kids and they were, you know, three kids, three and under to the property and work on it. And we, you know, we try to keep them from stepping on the nails and <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, and turning over the paint buckets, but that always happened and they're fine. They're fine. Don't worry about it. <laughs> um, and so, you know, we're renovating the house and then we'd leave and we'd go home for the night. Well, one day we showed up and the property had been broken into and someone had stolen all the copper pipes in the property because you know, down in the basement, they were exposed. Right. And we're like, oh, really? Come on. So we went and we replaced the copper pipes and we put more in there. Right. Literally a week later, broke into again, copper pipes gone again. <laughs> like, wow. what is going on? And we were talking to a friend of ours and they said, well, copper is kind of at a premium right now. And so people are using it for people are breaking in all over the place in this area where wow. the house is uh, for drug money. And we're like, oh, really? Okay. So we learned the lesson not to put copper in and so we put pex instead so it's, which is like plastic that's not worth nearly as much as copper right um and this property just had problem after problem after problem we finally fixed it up and we put it on the market nobody would buy it no one bought it and it was sat on the market for six months before we said well okay we've got to do something else so we pivoted and we put tenants in there mm -hmm. well the tenants were paying very low mortgage very low rent right. and you know the the type of tenants that we were attracting were not ones that were taking care of the property and so we had done all this work to make it beautiful and now it was no longer beautiful right and then a tenant started the kitchen on fire oh. burned up the house oh, <laughs> just, no. 
like, oh my gosh, it was just problem after problem after problem. And, and it took us 10 years to get rid of that money pit. And so, so here's the lesson that, that I learned. So the lesson I learned is you've got to do your homework on the location where you're going to buy a property. Uh, because if the, if the property is just, is, doesn't, if it's cheap, it's, don't buy it just because it's cheap. That's the right. biggest lesson. Right. You know, a cheap property may be the worst property that you've ever purchased. I, we, we've purchased other properties that were way more expensive than that. And we never had any problems with them. And uh, the tenants always paid rent on time. There was never any, you know, fires in the kitchen or no, you know, issues wow. like that. Like nobody broke into it and did things. Um, and so we learned a big lesson that you've got to focus on the location and uh, actually nicer properties are going to make you a lot more money in the long term, even though they cost more in the beginning. Right. Wow. Yeah, that sounds like, a, yeah, that was definitely a money pit situation. But that is a heck yep. of a lesson to be able to learn from it, though. That's amazing. That's a lot happening. Good grief. Oh, yeah. And I've seen I've had, actually had a flip and they've, I've seen some people get their um, I've heard horror stories about the copper pipe thing. I don't even think it's even stopped. I think that's still happening now, which is wild. Isn't it? Yeah. I mean, you, here's the thing that really blows my mind is, okay, so somebody's like, hey, we're going to go in, we're going to pass everything, we're going to break in these windows, and we're going to grab all the copper pipes. All right. So first of all, if you have the time to cut the pipes, where are you getting the tool, number one? where Who's, who's giving you these tools? It's not like you can get a regular pair of scissors. You got to go out and buy the tool to go cut the pipes. I, I know, you know, copper pipes yes. are doing something, but you're not making millions off copper pipes. You're killing me. So, but anyway, you know, neither here nor there. I'm, <laughs> I'm judging right now. I'm going to get off my heart hurts. Yeah, my apologies. Really. All right. <laughs> so, <laughs> Camilla, let's hit. We're going to hop into segments. Okay. So, in the segments, the first, sec- first question in the, the back half of this podcast is we ask two specific questions every episode, all the time, around the same time. And this question, well, not the. The questions aren't asked at the same time. We ask, never mind. You know what I mean. So for, <laughs> the first question, Camilla, is what is your troop to task? And for those who are listening and watching a troop to task, Camilla is going to give you one thing you can do right now to start yourself down this real estate investing path or whatever path she thinks is the best for you. Yeah. So one thing you can do right now is to start getting educated. And the best thing to do that, the best way to do that is to just you know, you can just grab my quick course. It's called Passive Investing Made Easy. It's just on my website, steadystreaminvestments.com. And it's a course that will walk you through from A to Z, the power of passive investing and exactly the steps that you need to do. Uh, and 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 it's, a, it, it's an amazing course. So take that. Nice. Okay, next question. What question do you wish you were asked more often? And what's the answer to that question? Um, I wish I was asked more often the um, what are the risks involved in in doing the in passive investing because you know as a passive investor you don't get to control it so the answer to that is that the risks involved is the risk that the the actual business plan won't get uh, achieved right? right so whenever we there's a group investment we take the apartment complex and we decide what are we going to do to m- bring value to this apartment complex and make it worth more money so that we can get better returns for investors and put together a plan and whatever the plan says is what we need to do to follow that in order to achieve what we think we can what we can get um but the risk is that the business plan falls apart or the risk is that the the team who's running that are the ones who are, they don't execute it properly. So mm. that's one of the biggest risks in involved in, in investing into one of these apartment complexes. Okay. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Camilla Jeffs. Yeah. I used it again. All right. All right. So, <laughs> So Camilla, if you could please give them a way to get in touch with you, to reach out to you, if they want to work with you, if they want to invest with you, or if they want to show you, well, I don't know how you handle this part, but if they want to show you an investment that they have that you might be able to take the shot on. 
Excellent. Yeah. So the easiest is just visit uh, my website, CamillaJeffs.com. That's where I am. You can find me, CamillaJeffs.com. And through that, you can get connected to Steady Stream Investments. You can find me on all the social channels uh, and and you can schedule a call with me. I would love to chat with anybody who's interested in adding this steady stream of income to your portfolio. I like the tagline. I like the tagline. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for tuning in. We're going to hop straight into the FAQ question after this. But for until that time, remember you're better than you were, but you're not half as good as you're going to be. I'm Oliver Perry. You can find me info at the Oliver Perry show or the Oliver Perry on Instagram, YouTube, IG. Oh, IG is Instagram, YouTube, t- TikTok. That's another one. That's another one. TikTok is another one. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's about it. All right. So in the meantime, we gotta go. We're gonna <laughs> we're gonna go do the FAQ. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you guys in a second.